I started the show. I said, happy NVIDIA week. I, I started this week on Twitter, happy NVIDIA week. It was actually more ridiculous than I thought it was going to be. Uh, the stock's now trading at, oh, what, over $800 this morning. So um, the, the 200, they gained an AMD. They literally uh, had a little bit of a pullback before, and they grew by an AMD $270 billion of market cap gain in the wake of its huge growth. What happened, Pat? So first of all, it was definitely the circus. They literally, uh, there were countdowns on the earnings coming up uh, on CNBC, right? Kind of like, you know, days till Christmas or, or, or something like that, that, you know, you, you would like as a kid. And, you know, I haven't seen this. I literally, I have not seen this exuberance since .com 1.0 when uh, Cisco was essentially the, the, the NVIDIA. It's, 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 it's miraculous, but Hey, well, what did they do? I mean, they beat on revenue by eight, you know, seven and a half percent. They beat on EPS by about eleven and a half percent, which, by the way, uh, was the lowest beat percentage over the over the last four quarters. But it was the exuberance that the gravy train uh, can continues on, and it looks to me like Nvidia is becoming a very much a retail stock, and you know the 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 impact of that has its pluses and minuses, but you know when you grow by an AMD after you beat by you know eight percent, this this is 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 what happens, and it was no mystery, right? When you look at the uh, the size of of the different businesses that Nvidia is in, is they they blew away data center, right? Eighteen billion. By the way, seven quarters before data center was three point eight uh, a billion. I mean, it's just same size as gaming, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, gaming uh, back in the first quarter of uh, fiscal year 23 was 3.6 billion. So they were basically the same size. And since then, right, gaming has has shrunk, right? Uh, they did have, you know, that quarter over quarter uh, was the same, which, you know, isn't great, particularly because that was the holiday uh, holiday time period. But yeah, it was all about um, LLM multimodal uh, LLM uh, inference and, uh, and and training. So, you know, it's, it's so funny. CNBC was kind of racking their brain. I could tell like, hey, what do we what do we talk about on this? And they asked me about uh, automotive and absolutely no disrespect to, you know, the the folks that in, in video automotive. But I just said, hey, in, in proportionality, right, you're looking at a two hundred eighty million dollar a quarter versus an $18 billion uh, quarter and overall a $22 billion quarter. It's like, it's 1% of, of revenue. So it's in, inconsequential uh, and even pro viz at, at 463, right. Is, 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 you know, even it's larger than automotive, but, and I think the big question and Dan, you and I, you and I got hit with this and just weigh in uh, on this is, how long does this continue, right? And listen, current course and speed in competition that's out there, on a percentage basis, Intel is gonna lose percentage market share uh, to AMD uh, and to Intel and maybe even some of the ASIC uh, startups. But when you have a, a rocket ship that's, that's growing uh, like this, <coughs> all companies can grow immensely in uh, dollar proportionality, uh, particularly uh, uh, NVIDIA. And and Dan, that was the big basis of your uh, piece that I don't know if you published it yet, but uh, on, on MarketWatch, but but you and I had discussed this uh, uh, last night. What, what's your take? Listen, I'm the, you know, this is a perfect moment and a setup for a victory lap. When you get it right, you got to pat yourself on the back, and and no, I you got to do that. You have I to. Have do a, that. I have an extensive op-ed that's going to come out. And I don't want to spoil it for everyone out there that's probably literally sitting at the edge of their chair, being like, "I wonder what Dan's going to write next about Nvidia." So, but let me let me tease it out for a minute. So, in 2020, I said Nvidia would be the next trillion dollar market cap company. The conditions were slightly different, but it was more based on two factors. It was the tie-up with ARM and the impending AI growth. In 22, when the stock had fallen to like $150, and by the way, it's trading at 800 now. Okay, 
Um, I went on CNBC and I was, I was, I got a lot of pushback um, from the hosts on the show. I was on Squawk Box about why I said Microsoft and Nvidia would be absolutely some of the best bets that people could make at that point, merely because AI was going to come so fast, so furious, and nobody saw it. It was. De- I kept talking. Pat, remember how I talked about tech being deflationary? Well, AI is yes. the most deflationary aspect of technology. Anything that enables you to do more with less people. Remember Altman and the, the billion dollar one person company that he keeps talking about. Well, now it's almost the opposite, Pat. It's like, you know, it's like you get to the other side of this thing and it's like once everybody's getting on the bad wagon, it's kind of time to step back and go, hmm. Now when everybody's like, yes, buy, buy, buy. This is like that inverse Kramer thing that everyone yes. jokes about, you know. By the way, someone showed a video yesterday of, of Kramer talking about shorting NVIDIA when it bottomed at $130. So this stuff I mean, is by fun. the way, it, it, it I mean, it's, it's fun to pile on Kramer, but it's- No, no, I'm not pile on him. I just mean it's- No, I know that. History. We pile on at all moments, Pat. We put yeah. it, what were you saying? Go ahead, sorry. No, 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 no. I was just saying, um, I mean, rational, rational people would be like, that, that totally makes sense, you know? Well, when things are going bad, the assumption is it'll never get better, right? And yeah. then when things are going well, the assumption is that it'll never get worse. And both of those assessments are, are emphatically wrong. And so the real question to your point is how long does it continue? Well, you made a good astute assessment that the growth is actually already slowing. Now, this is a law of large number of things. You could align it to the cloud numbers and their growth. Again, none had growth that was as astronomical as what we're seeing here with NVIDIA. But NVIDIA has done this with effectively no competition. They've effectively had no meaningful competition. Um, And so now over the next few quarters, for the first time, meaningful competition is popping up. And the second kind of factor about competition is there seems to be a meaningful consensus among the competition that they know they need NVIDIA, but they also know NVIDIA is too strong. Yeah. And so whether that was Satya Nadella talking about networking chips and basically not wanting in developing chips that would enable data flow in Azure that would not require as much dependence on NVIDIA, AWS already did this with its adoption of DGX Cloud. It did not use NVIDIA's networking. Um, You have um, Google TPUs, Meta's developing its own chips, even though it's the biggest buyer of NVIDIA chips. You have uh, Oracle building with Ampere. You know, you just kind of go up and down the stack. Everybody wants to build their own. And then you had AMD, of course, Lisa Su's got this big forecast. Um, and this is because there are companies that want to have a competitive choice. Uh, and also, Pat, what does it mean like with, with what Intel is doing, with what Sam Altman is suggesting? These are all very speculative, but clearly Sam Altman thinks we need an alternative. I mean, he's not saying pour it all in and help NVIDIA get bigger. He's saying let's create an alternative. And so you got the, the different architectures, Pat. You've talked a little bit about FPGA, but definitely the ASIC architecture for very specific workloads on recommendations and filtering. Um, those are just a couple of, for instances, you've got power requirement issues that are to be considered. And GPUs are good at a lot of things, but they're not great at any one thing. It's kind of how they're designed, a lot like general purpose CPUs. Um, so all these things are kind of just a, a series of conditions that say NVIDIA will keep growing and it'll keep being successful, but not at the same rate. And then when the rate slows down, investors, especially retail investors, are fickle. Like, oh, they're only growing. so. Pat, next quarter will be the first time that the company is growing on a year over year against the generative AI boom quarters. So what if next quarter, after they grew 250% revenue a year ago, they only grow 25% over the 250%? People are going to be like, oh my God, it's slowing. It's like, well, it's actually growing really fast. Um, And so these are all the conditions that I'm kind of looking at saying, look, they're, they're doing great. It's just different when competition rises. And these are real competitors. These are formidable companies. And Pat, what about Apple? I mean, we haven't even heard about what Apple's going to do, but I seriously doubt they're going to want to be in their vertical integration strategy as dependent on a single company as most of these cloud providers have been on. Yeah, they Apple recognizes they can't replicate that in the cloud, but I got to tell you, their cloud spend uh, is is big. <laughs> you know, Apple used to do servers back in the day, uh, but they don't they don't do it anymore. Hey, Dan, what would you think about? Um, you know, is there a potential acquisition uh, play here? Acquisition for who? For NVIDIA. 
right? You got to keep the growth going and you don't know how to. I don't think know, they can acquire anybody, Pat. I don't think it, I don't see a circumstance in which I, I think what they are doing that's really smart is some of the seed investing that they're doing in some of these very cool startups. They've got all this yeah. excess cash flow, Pat. They're putting bets all over the market. It looks like a roulette table. You know, there's a hundred interesting startups. They're probably putting money in 90 of them right now. I mean, you know, and there's going to create a loyalty and a commitment and access to technology and IP. I don't see any circumstance in which they could make a big deal right now. Do you? Do you think they could do it? It's such a hard thing to answer because you're trying to get in the head of the regulators who are like crazy right now, um, particularly over in, in, in Western Europe. So I, I got to say no in the current environment, even if it has nothing to do with, with their current market, like buying a Qualcomm, right? Or... Or, or, or something too powerful like that. Too, too right? powerful. Totally different markets. I got to tell you, though, five years ago, that would have been a shoe in. Yeah. Right. Well, uh, when you look at the definition of, of markets. But again, we're, we're in this wacky time where big companies be bad just because they're big. Listen, I, you got to admire the success of NVIDIA. This is one of those where. I'm not criticizing for the sake of criticizing. I'm just saying it's gotten to the point where the it's it's everybody's on the bandwagon, and that always scares me. When yeah. everyone says it's it's like an endless upward and to the right, you're like, uh oh, you know. Same thing with the doubt, and everyone's like, this is never coming back. It's like we as people sometimes just, you know, Pat, you're a big, you're you're a you like to devour history. You talk about that. You know, and when you read history, you do realize that there's a reason that people make those statements about cycles and history repeating itself. And, you know, there's a kind of a, a, a cast of different reasons that happens. But one of them is because we're stupid as a society. We're just stupid. We just like things happen. We see it happen and we let it happen again. And by the way, it's kind of like that, you know, you kind of wonder, are we actually that stupid or are we just being led on <laughs> as a society? But. I don't yeah, Dan, Dan, I know, listen, this is an important topic, and I know we're talking a long time about this, but um, what is unprecedented historically is that the big companies keep getting bigger, right? Every company had cycles where they would be dominant for about a decade. Probably the longest run of domination was IBM, uh, and they're still a very important uh, company out there, but the dominance I've never seen before, right? We had the um the run up in 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 cisco and yeah you know they're they're still dominant in in networking have a great business but they're not dominant uh kind of overall and apple is the one that stymies me the most consumer electronics every 10 years a new company comes along whether it's sony or um lg uh, samsung you know they right Tosh toshiba what was was dominant uh for a time uh as as well so you know, out of one side of my mouth, uh, hey, the big company bad is, uh, is, is, is odd to me. But then again, uh, if you look at the concentrated value of, I mean, isn't NVIDIA worth more than all, all equities in China now? The entire uh, China stock market? Something like that. I don't have that number in front of me. But, you know, we saw that it's, that it's bigger than the entire uh, S&P 500 energy sector, all the companies in it put together on market cap. Yeah. 